everyone, Kyla here from Kyla is Inspired. I recently took a trip to Tokyo, Japan, which has been my dream destination ever since I was a little girl, and I happen to have a whitefish allergy. So I wanted to share um, my tips and experiences with you in case you want to go to Japan and you also happen to have a whitefish allergy. So before you keep watching, I want to preface this by saying I can eat shellfish and I can also eat tuna. Um, these were recent discoveries that I made over the past couple of years. I don't like the taste at all because all seafood to me tastes like an allergic reaction. So I still planned to avoid all seafood at all costs while in Tokyo. I also wanted to say that while my allergy is not life-threatening, it's still considered severe. So I did take a lot of precautions that I wanted to share with you um, because I wanted to avoid an allergic reaction at all costs. <laughs> so, how did I prepare for this trip before I went? I did a couple of things. Um, the first thing that I did was print out allergy cards from Just Hungry, which I will link to you in the description. Um, they had pre-printed cards that say, I am allergic to blank um, and all their byproducts, so please do not serve me this food as I have a severe allergy. So this was awesome. Um, I also happened to have a nut allergy, which I was less concerned with going to Tokyo, but it was still a concern to me. So I printed the nut card, and I also printed a blank card. And the kanji for fish is sakana, so I learned that kanji, and I also wrote it on the allergy card, um, and in hiragana as well. So there was no um, mistaking that it was fish that I'm allergic to. Um, and I carried them everywhere I went in a little pouch. So if I was at a restaurant and I felt the need to disclose my allergy, I'd have the pouch with me at all times. I also prepared a little pouch to bring with me on my carry-on, and it included two EpiPens, 100 capsules of Benadryl, which is usually my go-to when I have an allergic reaction, as well as five doses of prednisone, which my doctor prescribed to me right before I went on the trip, just in case of an emergency. And I also had my prescription signed by my doctor with a letter stating why I was carrying these prescriptions with me. Because the last thing I wanted to do was go through customs and have some sort of error and like they wouldn't let me in with, with my EpiPens or whatever, but I had no issue. <laughs> I was pleasantly surprised. I feel like I stressed out a lot before the trip preparing my prescriptions and making sure I had everything in order when it was really a non-issue, so that was super. Now, what did I do when I got to Japan? Well, the coolest thing about Japan, in my opinion, is that all the restaurants had these glass display cases outside that had all of the dishes lined up so you could see what they were serving. So even if the menu wasn't in English, you could easily say like, this is a sushi restaurant, or this is a ramen restaurant. So, for the most part, we could avoid places that, you know, were raw fish and whole fish, and like squid and like shrimp tempura. You could obviously see what was a restaurant that could be a problem. I ended up eating a lot of gyozas, and I ended up eating a lot of pork buns, because I knew those were safe alternatives. Because I can eat tuna, um, the first time that I had noodles in Japan, I kind of had to be brave and I had to take a risk. EpiPens ready, Benadryl ready, I took a tiny bite of broth. Most broth in Japan uses dashi paste, which is tuna. So I knew I could have tuna, but it was still scary. But I was in Japan. At that point, I was so sick of not having Japanese food, walking around for hours. I did it. I tried it. And you know what? I could eat it. And it was really good, too! Um, so that was like win number one. If you're watching this and you have a tuna allergy, <laughs> I would not recommend doing what I did. I would steer clear of broths. I also wanted to mention that we pretty much avoided vending machine restaurants because they're not in English. 
they're usually crowded and they're pretty stressful. So we usually went to sit down restaurants or restaurants that clearly stated they had English menu. So the second time I had noodles, surprise, they had an English menu and their vegetable ramen looked really, really tasty. But it had a little fish icon next to it, right? Like little fish icon of death. But I was really hungry and the noodles looked really good. So I took another risk because I figured it was bonito flakes again or dashi. And it was. And also it had pork. So it was definitely not vegetable ramen, but it was really tasty. All in all, I was a little disappointed that I wasn't braver in trying noodle dishes. But I also feel like it was a win because I did get my noodles in Japan, which was kind of what I really wanted. I think the takeaways, if you're going to Japan, know your allergy, which I'm sure you do. If you can get away with being brave like I was and trying things, it's worth the risk. But if you have a severe life-threatening allergy, give the cards everywhere. Yes, it might seem like it's a nuisance, it's worth it. So go to Japan, eat whatever you want, and have a really good time because I'm so happy that I did and I'm already planning my next trip back. Allergy be damned. Thank you for watching this video. I hope you found it helpful. Um, check me out on social media at Kyla Copert and kylaisinspired.com.